Okay, before you watch uh, this segment, understand that between the segment you just watched and the one you're about to watch is a very important conversation between Mary Warren, Mercy Lewis, and Abigail. Okay, it's very important that you read this. Uh, if you don't read the conversation that these girls have in this room before the adults come back in, uh, you're going to be confused for most of the story. And if you're only watching these clips, there is not enough in these clips for you to pass the quizzes and uh, hand in a decent writing assignment. So you have to read the story, okay? But hopefully these clips are helping you uh, understand the story a little bit better, okay? So I'm going to call this Act 1, Scene 2. Enter John Proctor. Oh, I was just going home, Mr. Proctor. Be you foolish, Mary Warren? Be you deaf? I forbid you leave the house, did I not? Why should I pay you? I'm looking for you more often than my cows. I, I just came to see the great doings in the world. I'll show you great doings on your arse one of these days. Now get you home. My wife is waiting with your work. Uh, when she leaves. <laughs> I'd best be off too. I have my Ruth to look after. Good morning, Mr. Proctor. Ugh. Ah. I almost forgot how strong you are, John Proctor. What mischief is this? Oh, she's only gone silly somehow. The road past my house is a pilgrimage to Salem all morning. The town's mumbling witchcraft. Oh, posh. We were dancing in the woods last night, and my uncle leapt in on us. She took fright is all. <laughs> you are wicked yet, aren't you? You'll be clapped in irons before you're twenty. John. Give me a word, a soft word. No, no, Abby, that's done with. Oh, you come five miles to see a silly girl fly. I know better. I come to see what mischief your uncle's brewing now. Put it out of your mind, Abby. John, I wait for you every night. Abby. I never give you hope to wait for me. Well, I have something better than hope, I think. Abby, put it out of your mind. I'll not be coming for you anymore. Surely you're sporting with me. You know me better. I know how you clutched my back behind your house and sweated like a stallion whenever I came near. Or did I dream that? It's she put me out. You can't pretend it were you. I saw your face when she put me out. You loved me then. You do now. Abby, it's a wild thing to say. Well, a wild thing may say wild things, but not so wild, I think. I've seen you since she put me out. I've seen you nights. I have hardly stepped off my farm this seven months. I have a sense for heat, John, and yours has drawn me to my window. And I've seen you looking up, burning in your loneliness. Don't tell me you never looked up at my window. I may have looked up, and you must. You are no wintry man. I know you, John. I know you. I cannot sleep for dreaming. I cannot dream, but I wake and walk about the house as though I'd find you coming through some door. Child, how do you call me child? Abby, I may think of you softly from time to time, but I will cut off my hand before I ever reach for you again. Wipe it out of mind. We never touched, Abby. Aye, but we did. Aye but we did not. How I marvel how such a strong man may let such a sickly wife be. You'll speak nothing of Elizabeth. She is blackening my name in the village. She is telling lies about me. She's a cold, sniveling woman, and you bend to her. 
Let her turn you like, do you look for a whooping? I look for John Proctor that took me from my sleep and put knowledge in my heart. I never knew what pretense Salem was. I never knew the lying lessons I was taught by all these Christian women and their covenanted men. And now you bid me tear the light from my eyes? I will not. I cannot. You loved me, John Proctor, and whatever sin it is, you love me yet. That's enough. John, pity me. Pity me. Now, at this point in time, all the people in the next room start to sing. They start to sing the song. And the name of Jesus is heard from the next room. And Betty wakes up and starts to scream. I can't hear that, I can't hear that. Betty. Now, whoop, where did Abigail go? Come here. Now, when Betty starts screaming and jumping up and down, causing a great commotion, everybody starts to come in the room. To see what's going on. What's going on, girl? What ails you? Stop that wailing. Wah, wah, wah. What happened? What are you doing to her? Betty, she heard you singing, and suddenly she's up and screaming. Whoop. It's the Psalms, the Psalms. She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. No, God forbid, mercy. Run to the doctor. Tell him what happened. Mark it for a sign. Mark it. Hmm. This is a not notorious sign of witchcraft afoot. Goody nurse, a prodigious sign. Rebecca, Rebecca, go to her. We're lost. She suddenly can't hear the name of the Lord. It's a hard sickness here. Giles Corey, please be quiet. I've not said a word. No one here can testify I've said a word. Is she going to fly again? I hear she flies. Man, be quiet. Now, at this point, Betty's still jumping up and down, screaming, as Rebecca Nurse comes closer, Betty starts to calm down. And the closer Rebecca gets, the more peaceful Betty becomes, and she lies back down and goes back to sleep. Okay, that is the end of Act 1 as far as this little play is concerned. And like I've said before, there's more to Act 1, and you need to read it, okay? If you need to go back and go over it with me, come see me. We can, you know, we can solidify things as we go. But it's important to read the entire play. Hopefully, what you've seen has given you sort of a further understanding of the material because as a play, it's meant to be seen, not so much just read, okay? So hopefully this has gotten you a little bit further on in your understanding of the piece. So let's go ahead and recap what we have looked at up to this point, okay? Opens up, Betty can't wake up, Paris is very, very upset about that, but he's not only upset about that because his daughter is sick and they can't tell why, he's almost more upset that it could be witchcraft and that could cost him his job and his place in the town, okay? He's almost more concerned about how people are going to see him after this than he is about his own daughter. Okay? We also get a, you know, a, a look at Abigail, very, very deceitful person. Uh, and you're going to you're get most of that you know, deceitful uh, person in the conversation between Abigail, Mary Warren, and Mercy Lewis that I didn't show you. So it's very important for you to read that. Okay? And, of course, we discussed the antecedent action which was the dancing in the woods, okay? 
That's how Betty's illness began. If you remember, he jumps out and surprises them, and she falls out. Okay, and that is why she can't wake up. Now, of course, after that, we're talking about, you know, of course, the conversation between Abby Mercy and uh, Mary Warren, very important. And then John comes in, and we find out that John and Abigail have had a relationship. Now, John is married to Elizabeth Proctor. So he had an affair. Elizabeth knows, and she put Abigail out. Abigail was their servant. Well, not the servant, but their, you know, she worked in their home. And after Elizabeth found out about the affair, she fired Abigail. Okay, that was what Paris was talking about earlier, about why is your name bad in the village. Okay. So, obviously, Abigail is still in love with John Proctor, whereas John Proctor is trying very hard not to entertain thoughts of Abigail. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this town, and, and, and over all of that is this idea of witchcraft and why Betty can't wake up and what's going on with uh, Ruth. She can't wake up. Well, she, she can wake up. Her eyes are open, but she's kind of wandering around like a zombie. So these girls are affected in, in, in some way, and the only explanation they can come up with in the town is witchcraft. So there's a lot going on, okay? Keep reading. Uh, when you get uh, to Act 2, come see me, and um, I'll show you the clip for Act 2 to give you some understanding of what's about to happen. Act 2 uh, happens primarily at the Proctor home. So there's a lot you get between John Proctor and Elizabeth Proctor, uh, and some other characters, and of course, uh, Reverend Hale as well. So, like I said, when you get there, come see me, and I hope these have helped you out, and I hope you're able to uh, sort of get more of an interest and invest yourself a little more in the story. It's a good story. Keep at it. If you have any problems, come see me, okay? All right.